Well, yeah, hello guys, ladies, and welcome to my channel. Uh, this is a piece of, this is Walnut. I'm tried the uh, thing again I really liked doing last time, putting some micro powder in the sealer and sealed it. I, that's why I call this a uh, copper walnut bowl, because that's what I use is copper. And I think it turned out real, real fine. And I like it a lot. You hang in there and we'll, uh, We'll show you how we made this thing. Well, I'm trying to figure out uh, another project. You know, after a while, it gets to be really difficult to figure out to do something different because if you do the same thing all the time, you know, nobody would be interested in that. So I thought, well, I need to do something. I was, you know, see this big old pile of wood out here? Uh, it's just rottening, and I need to use it. Uh, I don't have any place to put it out of the weather. Uh, I think last year, maybe the year before, I had it all covered up with a tarp. And one hot summer day, I went to get me some wood and lifted it back in a big old copperhead looking at me. So I quit using the tarp. So I'm going to find something out here to go make a bowl. And I'm thinking it's been a long time since I made a big walnut salad bowl. And I'm thinking that. But let's look at this wood here first. Uh, see that great big old thing right there? That's honey locust. So's the one next to it. So's that one down there. And then underneath there's some oak. So you, you get over here. And that's, uh, that's persimmon. So you look way back over there. And that's all cherry. And right here, that's Bradford pear. That's a nice piece. And over there, see those three? One, two, three, four. That's, that's walnut. They have been there probably three years and they're, they're really deteriorating. So I'm sort of thinking that one right in the center. I'm thinking about splitting that one right in the middle both ways. And I'll have four big bowl blanks. And uh, we, we'll figure out where we're going to go from there depending on you know how bad it is. But uh, it's a real shame, you know. I mean, it's, it's, it's rotting in quicker, quicker than I can get to it. So we'll just do that, and I'll get, go get my Husqvarna out here, and we see what we can do with this stuff. All right, I went out there in the rain and cut them up. Here they are. I got four of them. They're all 12 by 12. I didn't measure the depth. It's, it's going to change when I get all that rotten bark off. So I'm trying to decide which one I want to use. And then I'm going to call a good friend of mine and see if he wants one. But I, I'm, I'm tempted to go with this one. See, it's got, looks like it's got more figure in it right in, see right in here? It's sort of like that. Plus, I, I like the streaks of the sapwood in there. Now this one, this one has it too. It's not as prevalent as the other one. Now these two, they're, uh, I hadn't looked at them real close. But they, they're pretty nice. You got a crack right here, but that's no big deal. Uh, this has got some real nice figure in here. So it's, you know, it's sort of six one way, half a dozen the other. But I really think I'm going to go with this one. And here's some. Well, that's a big piece of wood, isn't it? Well, anyway, I'm getting ready. I got my beaver ready. I got my old beaver. It's got a heavy handle. Works a little better if you're, uh, you know, hitting something pretty rough. So I'm going to start right here working these corners down like this. Uh, some things are going to be flying. I had several people ask how my toe was. And then my toe was just fine. I had a little bruise above, right above the, uh, the nail. I'm glad it didn't hit on the nail. I'd have had a black nail. But uh, it's just fine. Uh, you can, here's you something you can see. Surprisingly, it's just not bad out of balance at all. You can put it in any position, and it does rotate back, but very slowly. So this, this part's a little heavier. Of course, you can see it is because it's bigger right here. And it's got all that moisture in it. So, oh, I checked it. It's uh, a low of 18 and a high of 35, depending on where you poke it. So let's sort it up and see what it looks like. Come on out of your way. Yep, yep, yep. I'm going to try to be more conscious of that. We're at... Uh, no, there you get wet. Six
I think while I'm down here, I think I'm just going to go ahead and put my tin in here. It's all real solid, so why not? As usual, I'm going to put a sunken tin in it. That's what I like. Got to do what he likes. I'm going to put it down here a little bit. I can tell by looking that's good. I'm going to put it in the dehydrator overnight. That thing might be look like a football in the morning. Well, I got just got this out of the dehydrator. It was in there about 20 hours at 125 degrees. Of course, the inside's not hollowed out yet, but, you know, I went in and I said, well, why not? It cracked a whole bunch in a lot of places. Nothing really serious. See, look at here. And, of course, this is going to be zero. No sense in putting the meter on it. Here, here, look at all those right here. So I'm going to go ahead and just fix all those before I flip it around. Might as well. Now I've got it here nice and handy. That one sort of surprises me because the pith was right here, but I thought I got it down far enough. But you can see, you can see the effects of what happens with a pith. You know, it's just sort of like, pshh, like that when it dries. That was interesting. So let me get my... I'm going to use my super fine dust and some Starbond CA. We'll just go ahead and fix those and leave them be for a while. I just got done sanding, sanding all that uh, CA glue stuff down. Only thing I don't like about using CA, you know, it always leaves a place. And, I don't care if you put wax or sealer on or whatever first, it'll still do it. But uh, time I get you know something dark on it, it probably it won't show too much. But I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take the scraper. This has like a dividy do inside, hard to sand, so I'm gonna just straighten it out. It'll take a second. Okay, I'm gonna start wheeling that inside out. Uh, I always leave the tail stock on for a little while, especially something like this, because I'm going, I'm going to get pretty aggressive with it. 
And if the tendon's going to fail, it's going to do it. All right, here we go. All right, I've got it out of the dehydrator. I got lazy this morning, stayed in a while, so it was in dehydrator 115 degrees at about a little over 21 hours. Altogether, I had to sit for 24 hours, uh, which, you know, that's fine. Yeah, that'd be about right, because I, I think I went in around three yesterday. Okay, anyway, so this morning I got it out and I looked at it real good. And the only thing I can really find is, make sure you can see it real good. I go, just a little bit more. Right there. Right. There you go. Okay, can you see that crack right there? Right there. Okay. That's the only thing I can see. Now, I took the calibers and I checked the the warpage, and it looks like it may have worked a little bit loose right there. And I'm thinking maybe a, oh, it could be a sixteenth to close to an eighth at the most. The one thing I did do different this time is I left the chunk on it. And, you know, that's still worn from being in there. So, you know, it certainly didn't hurt the chuck. It's not, you know, it ain't hot enough to melt anything, but I was looking at it over here pretty good. Over here, so I can't see the new cracks. And I can't, but you see these sort of like, uh, they like pooch out just a hair. I guess that's the drying of the CA glue or something. But I'm gonna go ahead and, and fix this crack right here and put it back on the lathe. And, I don't think I'm going to have to touch the outside other than maybe sand it a little bit. Uh, even if it is warped a little bit, I'm not going to touch the outside because, you know, I've already got it pretty good, actually. So let's do that. Let's get on the lace. Well, after I fix this, everybody's seen me fix those. So I'm not going to, not going to video that. So we'll catch you in a little while. I'm going to change my mind. I am going to video this because uh, I need to make a point. And I remember from yesterday, a good friend of mine's over here, and I was fixing a crack, and I put CDA glue, glue in it first, and he said, oh, I'll do it the same way. But then last night, I was, during my uh, non-sleeping hours, I guess, started thinking about it, and I used this fine dust. And what happens, if I put CDA glue in it, and then I put fine dust in it, it's going to cling to the walls before it gets to the bottom. And that's the reason I think that some of these that I fixed on the outside, the minute I sanded them or, you know, turned them a little bit, I mean, the cracks were there because the dust had not gotten into it. So I'm sort of thinking maybe that approach is, needs re-evaluating or something. So, mm, Chuck makes it heavy to do anything with, so I'm going to go ahead and put some in it now, see, after I... So I went, well, you didn't see it, but I put dust in it, and then I took this, put some in there. I took this uh, skew, pointed skew, and I really poked it in good like that. Now, I'm going to let that sit up before I put any more dust in it, because if I start putting dust in it now, it's going to just make like a cap across the top. That's my thinking. We'll find out, okay? 
So when I get get that done and back on the lake, we'll we'll turn it a little bit and we'll see if that crack pops back up. If it does, if it doesn't, well then I'm on to something. If it if it does, then I'm not on to something. That's the way it is. So I got it all set up and ready to clean up the inside a little bit. Actually, the bottom's good. It just needs a little bit of a a little bit of shear cutting to clean up some of the end grain and then sand it. The sides are a little thicker and pretty thick right in here and here. So basically what I want to do is, is come right into <clears throat> right there. That's, per, that's pretty good right there. So basically I just want to come into here a little bit. Try to somewhat mimic the inside to the outside. It isn't always necessary, but it uh, it helps a little. Gives that a little more better look. All right, let's see. I ain't turned this rascal on yet. I don't even know how bad it's gonna wobble. I guess we'll find out. I did I did check the chuck and tightened it, and it was just a hair looser, so it shrunk on me a little bit. Yeah, it's uh, it's not bad, don't tell you the honest truth. I'm not unhappy with it. Come on, double check. Make sure everything's tight here. Okay, good, good, good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and whoop her up to a grant. Use a little more, but overall it's not too bad. So let's do that while we're sitting here doing nothing. Hey, you guys remember, oh, a couple of bowls ago, I guess, I put some uh, gold micro powder in my sealer. And I really like the results, so I'm going to do it again with, on this walnut. This time I'm going to use copper. And uh, here it is, already mixed up. It's just my men wax sanding sealer. And I think it gives it a little something. You know, I'm not sure, but I like it. We'll, we'll just see. See what happens here. It gets into like where that end grain is and stuff right there. Boy, it's just soaking it up like a big dog. When you use a dehydrator, you gotta replace that moisture. You know what it is? You might as well have a straw on the other side. My goodness, I'm gonna have to mix some more. You can sort of see that gold glitter a little bit. 
to a neat looking, I think, though this is probably going to put three or four coaches on it. I will I'll tell you where I put all the CA. One thing I don't like about CA, but that's the nature of the beast. There you go. Get a little better look right there. You know, get a little more so you can see the outside better. There you go. You sort of see it glittering in there a little bit. I like it. We'll do another coat here, just a second, and then we'll come back after I get a few, and I'll bring you back then. Well, I let this sit overnight, and I'm really liking it. I really like how that copper does. I mean, that just adds another dimension to it. So my plan is to steel wool it, and then I'm going to put two coats of clear poly on top of that because. You know, I don't want to lose the copper. You know, I want it to look like it's deeper than what it is. So, there may be a couple of little places I have to sand. I really won't know until I get her going. So I'm going to do that and a little scotch pad, and I'm going to pull out the polyacrylic. It's a water-based, and I'll put about two coats on it, and then we'll start on the axe paste. And then we'll flip it around and get rid of that tenon and laser it and finish the bottom and all that kind of stuff. And then we'll think about what we're going to do next. See the heater there? I just turn it up full blast and I turn this guy slow so it'll go and I leave it for about 10 minutes and it is nice and dry. All right, I've got two coats of clear on it now and I've steel wooled it and I've scotch brighted it. So now I'm getting ready to put on the axe paste as usual. There it is. And I always use a one of these to put it on with. And, and in, go ahead and do inside and outside. That's got it. That is shiny, 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 isn't it, guys? Hey, don't worry, I'm not going to turn it with this. I just sort of like to do this when I'm done. No turning with cloth, otherwise you'll be turning and you won't like it. Well, I know you guys know how I do this, but I'm going to show you again anyway. I just use a little bit of this kitchen shelving, this rubber stuff. Put it right there and I always just use my chuck if it works. And I come back here and I always leave a, a place right there. Come in here and bring it up to it nice and flat. And you ought, ought to be able to put a little pressure on it because, you know, there's well braced inside. Tighten that up, tighten that up. And whirl it up and see if it whirls. Looks like maybe it worked a little in there, but that'd be all right. You can handle that. I used to use gouges all the time. I guess I've sort of not as quite as much in practice as I used to be.
All right, let's go play with the laser. All right, there it is, fresh out of the laser. I, uh, I wanted to make it big like this, but I hit the wrong button, I guess. I thought I had it that way. Is that way on the screen? But when he printed it, it printed it, burned it. He did it just like that. So, let's see what we're gonna do here now. I'll rub all this off here now. So let me finish that up, and I'll come back and let a while. All right, it's it's the next morning again. So, <clears throat> so I wanted it to really get a good chance to dry overnight before I started buffing on it. Buffer creates heat, and if it's not totally dry, it'll, it'll cause it to sort of ball up. So what I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to check this out in any rough places that are just a little rough. I'm going to hit them with just barely some 320, just to sort of knock it off. There you go. This is the last step. Getting a pretty nice little glow to it. All right, guys, that's got it. Well, yeah, that wraps up another one, guys. So I'm gonna start doing something a little different when I wrap these up. I'm going to uh, try to think, you know, what would I have done different? Uh, if I was gonna do this bowl again all the way through the process, what would I have done different? I can think of two things that I did that I, I wish I hadn't have done. It didn't turn out that bad, but at the same time, they were avoidable. When I took it out of the, the first time I took it out of the dehydrator, you know, it had all those little cracks in it. And I fixed them with CA glue and, uh, you know, shavings. And I wish I hadn't done that because the, uh, it was so dry, the CA glue soaked in quite deep. Normally, I can sand off, you know, where it discolors it. But this soaked in so deep I couldn't get it out. And you can sort of see it in here. So what I would have, should have done, and I, I will next time, I can remember it, is I would take my uh, clear sealer and mix a mix a slurry, you know, like a like a paste or something, and really rub it in good and let it sit overnight and sand that off. And you know what that does, it that sort of seals it as well as. Uh, you know, gets it in all the cracks, and they're nice and hard, and it works good. So the other thing I think I maybe I did, I think maybe I overdid it a little bit on the copper, maybe a little too thick. I mean, I think it looks pretty good, but it sort of disguised uh, some of the walnut look to it. But other than that, you know, it, it's a it's a beautiful bowl. It's 12 inches by oh I don't know, I guess maybe four. I know, I know it's 12 there because it barely fit in the laser. I can't put anything over 12 inches wide in the laser. I built an elevator in it so I can put something quite deep, but not wide. I'm limited to 12 inches. So if it had been a 13 inch bowl, I could not have lasered it. So there's my laser. Well, there's another thing I would have done different. I would have lasered it after it was finished so that all my, my lasering would have turned up black looking rather than filled in. So the actual lasering would be that the very last thing I would do. Other than this, this is the last thing right here. It's a good looking bowl, my friends. It's a copper walnut bowl. So, you know, like I said before, tell your friends that you you found a channel that doesn't doesn't play on any music. Don't put on the dog. Don't try to act like what I'm not. I'm genuine me, you know. Subscribe, tell your friends, and call your mama.